How's it going everybody? So about two years ago, I made a video showing you how to remote in from one Windows machine to another. And a lot of you guys really seem to appreciate that video, but there was some confusion regarding the execution. So I'm gonna clear it up in this video. Hopefully this will help. Let's say we have two computers. This one right here is the one that I'm currently on. I am physically in front of. And then there's going to be another one that I want to connect to. The first thing you need to do is you need to get the information of the computer that you're connecting to. So what do you need specifically? Well, there's two things. You need the name or the IP and you need the credentials of that computer, the login, right? Username and password. So let's say for a moment that this computer right here that I'm on is the computer that I wanna to connect to. This is what I would do to find the information. So firstly, I would go to the search bar here in the bottom left-hand corner, and I would just type in CMD. And from here, what I would then do is I would type a command called IP config, which just shows you some of your network configuration information here. The only one I care about at this point is this one, the IPv4 address which will then link you to a private IP. This could be 10.0.0, this could be 192.168. It'll be something in that range, that class, and you just need to make a note of it. Another thing you can do is also grab the host name. So this is the IP for this computer, but we could also get the host name, which would tell us uh, the name of the computer. To do that, we can just go to system information here, and we can select it, giving us information about our current device. In this case, the only thing we care about is the actual device name or system name, which is indicated right here. Now, one other thing I need to mention is that the computer that you're remoting into has to be at least Windows Pro or Windows Enterprise. It cannot be Windows Home. If it's Windows Home, this will not work. Windows Home does not support, re support remote desktop protocol. Actually, before we connect, we need to make sure that RDP or the remote desktop protocol is enabled. To do that, again, let's go to the uh, search menu here and type in remote desktop and we should see, oops, I spelled it wrong, desktop settings. And we see it there, remote desktop settings. And when we click this, we'll see this window right here. If you're on Windows 11, it should look identical to this. And you'll see remote desktop is toggled on. Now, in your case, if you see that it is toggled off, this will not work. So toggle it on, you can confirm. And that means that this computer will now accept incoming RDP requests, huge. Once you've done all of this, you're now officially good to go. As long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network or home network or LAN, this will work. Today's sponsor is Remotely, a next generation remote access tool. It supports 4K at 60 frames and it even supports HDR. It's low latency, which makes it great for PC gaming, and it's supported on all recent versions of Windows. It supports session recording and voice chat, and it allows you to mark up web pages. It also has a very active community forum where you can post up your issues and get solutions in the same day. All transmitted data is encrypted using AES-256, so it is extremely secure. There's a strong 14 sign connection ID, which makes it virtually impossible to guess. You also have the option to brand the quick support tool with your company brand and logo. And there's an advanced mobile application that allows you to use your tablet as a terminal. And currently there's free licensing for both business and personal usage. So you have nothing to lose. I've been using this software now for a couple weeks and I'm very happy with it. And I highly recommend you guys check it out. Again, big thanks to Remotely for sponsoring this video. Check them out at the link in the description below. This particular machine is good and we can connect to it, but I'm gonna demonstrate what it would be like to connect to a machine now. Uh, so I obviously need another machine to connect to. And in this case, the machine I'm connecting to, uh, I'll just give you guys a quick little rundown of it so there's no confusion here, okay? Has an IP address of 10.0.0.129, a host name of complex, and I cannot tell you the username and password, of course, uh, but it does have a username and password. With this information, we can now connect remotely, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the start menu and we're just gonna type in remote desktop connection. We see it recommended there to us, so let's go ahead and select that. And we're gonna see this window here, okay? It's probably gonna look like this. You can click show options here just to get more uh, customization. And 
Here's what it's asking for for the computer name is it's asking for either complex, the host name, or the IP. If you try the host name and it can't find it or it doesn't work, switch to the IP and vice versa. I like to use the host name because in a typical environment, uh, an IP lease can expire and it might not always be the same, but the host name should always remain consistent. So always ask for credentials. We could save this as a desktop shortcut so we can always click it um, or we can just connect. So I'm gonna click connect here. Now we have the opportunity to enter in our credentials. This is by far where everybody on my last video had the most questions. They had ran into the most issues. So let me be very clear here. When it's asking for this username and this password, all it is saying is if you were in front of the machine physically that you were trying to remote into right now, what would the username and password be? How would you log in? That's all this is asking. These are not credentials I can personally provide to you because these are credentials that existed when you set the computer up. In this particular case, I do know my credentials, my username, complex, no worries. I'm not too concerned about you guys knowing that. Password is the password I use when I log into that machine. I'll type it in accordingly. You can click remember me, by the way, so you never have to do this again if you trust your environment. Uh, I do actually, so I'm gonna click remember me and I'm gonna click okay. Now it's telling me that it failed. Interesting, this is actually kind of a good thing because it means you guys can sort of see how we troubleshoot this. Now, I'm not quite sure why, but if I go to more choices, I have an option to use a different account. I'm gonna try one more time, complex, and I'm gonna try the password again. There we go, that worked. Or this is the connection to the other Windows computer that I have successfully remoted into. So we can see that we're in successfully, and once you're in successfully, you can do basically whatever you want. In uh, netstat to see these uh, current TCP connections, it would start listing them. Uh, or maybe what I could do is, you know, I could run a who am I to see who I'm signed in as. Yeah, okay, that all makes sense to me. So let's, let's just exit this for now. And uh, one thing I want to demonstrate is let's say that didn't work for you. So I'm going to close this connection. We're back at square one. We're on one machine trying to remote to another one. Let's try using the IP address. Now, if you recall, the IP address was 10.0.0.129. You can see I've even typed it in before. Username here is being stored as complex, but I'm going to always ask for credentials just so I can demonstrate this for you. And before I go a little bit further here, I just want to say you can also click this display tab. You can set the resolution. You can determine how things work with the audio. So you can make the audio play through the remote machine or you can make it come through the machine that you're on now. Let's reconnect. Um, get rid of this here. This time we're using the IP address instead of the host name. You'll see it works very similarly. Complex is the username. And just in this case, complex, the username and the host name are the same. Okay. Complex is also the host name, but the username could be different. Password's the same. So I'm going to type that in. I'm going to say, remember me. And once again, it, I have to drag it over because I'm on two monitors, but once again, it brings us over to the machine. We can see that we're successfully connected to the remote machine without much issue, and we could do anything that we wanted to do. Yeah, that's how you remote in from one Windows machine to another. I wanted to remake this video because I know there was a lot of ambiguity in the last one. I feel like I should get back in there and correct it. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If there's anything else you're confused on, let me know. Jesus, maybe I'll make a third video. <laughs> I don't mind making these. I really enjoy making videos. And if it helps you guys, that means a lot to me. So thanks so much. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video, whenever that may be. Till then, take care.